So tell us about yourself and um, your your journey to being a, a professional athlete. And then I've got a, uh, I teased Rennie, I have a topic for us this morning that I didn't reveal to him, but I know he's going to rock it. So we'll dive into that after you tell us about you a little bit. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me first and foremost. Um, yeah. Rennie Kern, I was born here in Atlanta, Georgia, and both my parents are Liberian immigrants who came here in the uh, early 80s. My mom came to Emory, got her master's in nursing. So that's how we really ended up in Atlanta. And my journey as far as football goes, it started at the age of 10 years old. I was the youngest of three, the only boy. I was rough. I was a knucklehead. So I needed an outlet. <laughs> and my mom tried me out in different things. She uh, tried me out in actually music first. So I grew up oh, playing wow. the piano, the drums, playing the orchestra uh, from middle school all the way up into my junior year. But football was that thing that just made me come alive. It was, it was that spark. And the fact that I had a group of brothers, I had an amazing coach. Um, my first year, um, a guy by the name of Ronnie Benton took me to my first Georgia game, exposed me to the, the amazing religion of Georgia football <laughs> that became right. my passion. Um, and, you know, going to, I grew up in Snellville, went to Brookwood High School. Yeah. And uh, just going there, man, that was my dream, you know, was to go there, was to make the family proud, uh, and then eventually go to the University of Georgia. And through hard work, through faith, through dedication, through so many mentors, teachers, trainers who allowed me to train for free. I mean, uh, I, I was able to achieve that dream. It was definitely nothing that was just me. You know, it was, it was definitely uh, a God thing. You know, God gave me the ability. Yeah. And then he surrounded me with the right people as well, the right support system. They say it takes a village. And so uh, through all those ups and downs, you know, I was able to make it through to the University of Georgia, even being considered as an undersized linebacker. I, I would consider myself that underdog story all day i was the guy who you know like i said was was the scholarship kid was a free and reduced lunch kid uh was also like i said labeled undersized throughout the entire recruiting process so wow. it's literally it's hard work dedication people like chip smith uh who's a trainer really big time trainer in gwinnett county that allowed me to train for free when my parents couldn't afford it and uh you know that's how i was able to uh, really establish myself and, and get to university of georgia it wasn't just where i showed up and got the jersey or anything like that even on the field i was the guy who was second string third string a lot of times and just through faith through dedication and consistency i continued to work even when the coaches weren't acknowledging me even when i wasn't on the field and, and nobody knew who rennie kern's name was i still believed and i still uh, put the extra work in and so uh Got to University of Georgia, didn't play about till about the seventh game of the season, but an opportunity came and I was ready. And that's something I talk about a lot is is operating at the level of your vision. So before your opportunity comes, yep. are you yep. ready? Are you if you want to be a starter, if you want to be a CEO of a company, if you want to be somebody who's, you know, a, a great father or a husband eventually, are you operating at that level before it comes? And so that's something that I did that really, really helped me to get on the field at University of Georgia as a true freshman and become a freshman All-American and eventually a three-time All-American there, Buckets Award finalist, uh, Chuck McNair Award, the Barty Award, like just got a lot of success through that same mentality and those same principles. So I was able to actually leave and um, forego my senior season to go to the NFL to help my family. My daughter was born at this time. I was around 21, 22 years old. It's, it's crazy to say now because it's so young when you look back. <clears throat> but um, yeah, forego, uh, for went my my senior season, went to the NFL. Everything started out great uh, with the Tennessee Titans, but just after the second year, coach staff got fired. Uh, the lockout happens, and so I found myself back home uh, in a place of uncertainty, a place where uh, I was faced with a lot of uh, adversity, and really had to face myself, and really had to ask myself if this is what I really wanted to continue to do in terms of my dream, and so. At this time, like I'm back at home for about eight, nine months and I'm training four hours wow. a day, just working extremely hard, waiting on a team to call. But I'm also working on myself. And this was my journey into entrepreneurship. So at this time, I'm reading tons of leadership books, books on self-help and personal development, uh, like Law of Success, Napoleon Hill. I'm going to tons of workshops. I'm meeting with business leaders like yourself, just really, really consuming knowledge and, and just seeking wisdom outside of just what I'd always done as far as being an athlete. So that's what led me to eventually write my first book and then also start my journey of becoming a public speaker, which I do now uh, yeah. full time. So fast forward, I, I went on to play with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and then also in the CFL with the Edmonton Eskimos and the BC Lions. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I ended up doing what I do now, 
football was just that platform that got me to where I am now as a full-time keynote speaker, author, and I'm also a certified leadership and business coach.